Welcome, my name is Ben Waddell. I am an associate professor of sociology here at Fort Lewis College, and I will be your professor for Sociology 210, which is a class about ethnography and writing. Now, ethnography is the specific study of people's cultural norms, um, folklore. It's, it's, a, it's a way of thinking about storytelling. We'll talk much more about what the ethnography means here in future classes. The writing side of this will obviously be part of the class. You will be writing, you will be thinking, but you'll be doing it many different ways. In fact, you'll do three main things in this class. You will interview people at the early part of this, during the early uh, weeks of this class. You will write an article about those interviews that communicate to a larger audience. And then you will create a video. And that could be about the same stories that you wrote about and the people that you interviewed. Or it could be a different story. Um, ideally, it would be a different story. And so the basic idea here is that you're going to work on the ways in which you listen to people in their stories. You're going to work on the way in which you write about people's stories um, and what you've heard of in the world. And you're going to work on then how you visualize this. I think each one of these is important because it's about the way in which we communicate with others about the things that we've learned about this world. And that's what sociology is all about. In fact, that's what social science is all about. Social science is about the systematic study of society, of people, and their norms and their customs. And then results, right? You, so you're systematically studying society, you get results, you then report those results to the outside world. All too often, we do a very bad job at reporting the results that we learn about the world that we're studying to the outside world. In fact, if you've ever picked up an academic journal and tried to read an article, I'm sure you've been assigned a few in the classes that you're taking here at Fort Lewis, what you've probably found is they're very difficult to read. They're not the type of thing that your everyday citizen could pick up and make sense of. And so what I really want to push you to do in this class is to become a better communicator. But in order to become a better communicator, to become a storyteller, you have to be able to listen to people. You have to listen to people's stories. You have to hear where they're coming from. And in a very neutral way, think about what their stories mean within the larger context of the world, or your community, or nation, country, etc. And so in this class, you're going to learn the skills that it takes to think about how to interview somebody, to listen to somebody, to tell their story, and then visualize their story. We'll work on all of those things in this class. Now, one of the things that you're going to have to do in this class is think about something you actually care about, something you really are passionate about, something that you would like the rest of the world to know. And once you have that, this class will be easier. If you don't have that, or if you don't take the time to think about what that thing is, this class is not going to be fun because you're going to be writing and communicating and telling a story about something that you're not passionate about, that you just chose to get through an assignment. And that's always a bad idea. So I really want you to think early on about something you really care about, something that you genuinely are interested in communicating to the rest of the world. Once you have that thing, I think the rest of this class will make much more sense. Okay, so you're going to do three things. You're going to listen to people. You're going to write an article and you're going to visualize a story. Those are three things that I want you to think about. But I also want you to think about this as being a moment in your life, a moment that might shift the way you think about the rest of your life. And I want to share the story of somebody that died many years ago, but whose life story has influenced the way I think about my own life. His name is Alberto Curda. Alberto Curda was a photographer in Cuba in the 1940s. Alberto was kind of, you know, like the, the playboy of, of Las Vegas, but in this case, La Habana. And La Habana was the Las Vegas of, of the Caribbean during this time period. So in the 1940s, Alberto Curra has his, his little Photoshop and he's taking photos of women on the beaches and he's, he's really kind of living it up. And then in 1959, there was a revolution. And during that revolution, uh, Che Guevara, Fidel Castro, Camilo Cienfuegos and others took over the country. Alberto, Alberto, Alberto Curra gets the opportunity to meet um, many of these figures and he actually becomes Fidel's kind of personal photography. He takes some of the most infamous photos of Fidel that are out there, uh, many of them in black and white. And you can just, you can see them. There's, there's so many of them. Um, but one photo he took early on during the revolution that fundamentally impacted the way I think about life was the photo that comes to be known as Alberto's Niño, or Curda's Niño. And so this photo is of a young girl and I, I really had no idea that this, you know, that this painting or this photo existed. 
And so one day I was in La Habana, I'd taken a group of students there, and I was near this um, kind of art mall outdoor space. And, and you know, there's artists and they're selling their paintings. And so I walked up to this young man and I got to talking to him. And, and I started asking him about his paintings and what he did. And, and it was really interesting to me because he, he was an artist, but he traveled around Latin America and he sold his paintings. And he was married to someone from Guanajuato. And he told me all this before I told him anything about my own life, right? And so he said he is married to a young woman from Guanajuato, which is where my wife is from. So we shared a lot in common. Um, and then I looked at one of his paintings of this, this young girl and I said, who is that? Like it just, I could, the painting impacted me. And I didn't know anything about it yet. And he said, well, that's, that's Curta's Nina. And I said, well, what's the story? And he said, well, Alberto Curta, he told me, you know, basically what I've already told you about Alberto. He said he was in the countryside and he was taking photos and he saw this young girl with a piece of, of leña or firewood in her arms. And he said, you know, what, what is that? Are you helping your parents gather firewood? And she said, no, es mi muñeca. It's my doll, right? She said, this is mi muñeca. And, and he said, you know, she kind of had a tear coming out of her eye. It was clear their family was very poor. And he remembered in that moment that this was what the revolution was all about. It was about people who had been forgotten. It was about helping families like this young girl's family. Right? And he said, for me, that was the turning point. That was the point when I said this revolution is worth it. Now, there are a lot of ways in which we can judge the Cuban revolution now 60 years later. But in that moment, what Curdo was reacting to was this great social need within his country to improve living conditions for the average person. And, and that was his moment. That, that was the moment that gave new purpose to what he did. He happened to be a photographer, and so he documented the, the revolution through photography. Um, I hope that you have a Curdo moment. I hope that you have an Alberto Curdo moment in this class, that you dig into something you're passionate about, and in digging into it, it changes the way you think about your future. It changes the way you think about your career. It changes the way you think about your life moving forward. Because that's the purpose of being in college in the first place. That's the purpose of taking a write-in ethnography class. Obviously, the purpose is not to bore you to death and force you to write, but rather to discover something that you care enough about that you want to clearly communicate to the rest of the world through film, through writing, through talking, through storytelling about this particular issue, whatever it is for you. So this course is an invitation. It's an invitation for you to have a curta moment. It's an invitation for you to think about what you want to do with the rest of your life. It's an invitation for you to tell a story to a broader audience. And it's an invitation to work one-on-one -on -one with me and other uh, members of your class on designing the way you think about telling stories and writing. I hope you enjoy the journey. This class truly will be a journey, and I look forward to working with each of you. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.